Okay, we've just begun the record, and now we're going to go to the share. We're going to have the screen ready for you right now. Okay, Abosai, welcome to the Perkei Avoshir. Once again, on Perry Gimel, we begin with our introduction to the Mishnah, Kol Yisrael Yeshlehem Chelek Leol Mabo, all of Israel, as a share in the world to come, Shenemar, as the Pasuk says, Vameich Kulam Tzadikim, the aggregate of the Jewish people. We're righteous people. We do good things, the nation as a whole. Ameich Kulam Tzadikim, we're righteous. Laolam Yeshu Oretz, they shall forever inherit the land. Neitzer Matoai, they are the branch of my planting. Ma'as Seyodai Lehisfa'er, they are the work of my hands that I may be glorified. When we talk about the righteousness of the Jewish nation. That righteousness is a righteousness predicated upon the performance of the commandments. The Jewish people are an extremely moral people because they keep the commandments. Yes, those who don't keep the commandments may not be moral at all because they don't have a, an anchor with which to decide what is right and what is wrong. If you don't have Hashem, then anything goes, anything. Logic has no place in what you choose to do. A person who is an atheist is capable of anything. He may choose to be moral based on the principles of the Torah ideology that has filtered down throughout all the centuries, but the fact is that can't, a person like this cannot be moral because they don't know what morals are. It's, it changes with the time. Whatever happens to be good at the moment is moral. You know, it's moral to allow many, many people at a race track, but it's not moral to allow more than 10 people in shul at any one time. It's like a little bit upside down. If you don't have a, a moral code, anything is possible. So the Torah is telling us that they are tzaddikim, lo'olam yeshu aris, they shall forever inherit the land they are the branch of my planting, they are the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. We're in the Mishnah that's on the board right now. Rabbi Hanina ben Chachinoi Omer. Rabbi Hanina, the son of Chachinoi, says, Haneir Balayla, someone who's awake at night, and one who walks alone on the path, the hamafana libo lebatola, and if a person turns his heart to foolishness, to emptiness, to that which is nullified, areza mischayev benafsho. The person is like as if he is chayev in his own life. He's taking his life in his hands. Yesterday, we spoke about the beginning of this mission. I just want to emphasize one more point. The Knesset Yisrael on this particular Mishnah, comes along and he says, as we spoke at the end of the year, that, you know, someone who stays awake at night and turns his heart to Batola, as we said, you know, we work all day. People go to work. You know, it's hard for us to learn Torah during the day. We're busy trying to co cope together a living. People work so hard. They go to work early in the morning. They don't come home till late at night. But that doesn't absolve us from the responsibility to learn some Torah every day. And it's not hard. As the Knesset Yisrael says, we say in the Shema, V'dibar Tabam, you should speak about the words of the Torah. As it says in the passage before that, Asher v'hayu advarim ha'eleh, and these words shall be, which I command you this day, it should be on your heart. You should teach them to your children. And when is that? So, when you're sitting in your house, there's a responsibility to learn Torah when you're sitting in the house. And when you go on the way, and when you lie down, and when you get up. So in other words, there's a responsibility for Torah learning every minute of the day. That's why the Pasuk says, well, you should be involved in it day and night. But if a person is working, 
and they're on the road. Now it's true today, today, if you're on an airplane today, you can be busy learning Torah every second of the time. I, I, I go to Eretz Israel periodically. Uh, Hashem should help. We should be able to go soon once again to visit my children, my grandchildren. When, when we go on an airplane, so it's a, it's a 10 and a half, 11 hour flight going, a 12 hour flight coming back. So I take my little iPod with me and I have all of Shas on the iPod, but I don't need it because today every single plane in El Al's fleet has a channel with Torah every second of the day. Chumash, Tehillim, Parsha, Gemara, Halacha, speeches, topics. Unbelievable. You can, you can listen every second of the day. You don't have to watch the current film, the Batola, that's being on, on the screen. But you can, you, can, you can listen to Jewish music. You can sleep. You can learn some Torah. So, the left of my derech. Now, the Knesset Israel comes along and he says like this, listen, here you are, you're not at home because you're going to make a living. You're going to earn a living. You have a right, a responsibility to go and earn a living. So you leave the house in the morning. There's no time to begin a shear. You got to get to work on time. You have to be there on time. The boss will be upset, might dock your pay, might lose your job. You have to be there on time. You work a long hours. The boss wants you to put a few extra hours. You're your own boss. You feel, I have to work a little harder to get a little bit more money. You might not come home till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. So you're really exhausted. It's very difficult to learn. But the Knesset Israel comes along and he says, listen, I want to tell you something. The shift of when you're sitting in your house, you have plenty of time. There's no question you have a responsibility to learn. But when you're going on the way, you can do two things. You can learn bishach b'cha, like we said yesterday, five minutes before you go to sleep. Take out a sefer, learn one pasuk. Over kumecha, and you get up in the morning, learn one halacha a day, one mishnah a day. That's what Rabbi Chan, what Rabbi Chanina ben Chachinur is trying to say. Don't spend the time libatola. When you're going on the road, you can make use of the good time and find a way at night, in the morning, learn something. Do something for Klai Yisrael, for yourself. Do something, Rabbi Chanina ben Chachinoy is saying, to connect Jewish people all together with the Torah, because that makes a difference. Now, we said that if a person, if a, and we're going we're gonna to take this, we're going to take this particular share off, because we know the Mishnah, I want to go to another one, we, we've said that uh, oops okay okay let's see let's see if we can get to the yeah here we go okay we've said that uh, we've said that we uh, let me get some of this over here okay Uh, let me get back to you for a second. Here we go. Uh, nope, that's not what we want. Uh, let me get back to you for a second. Hold on. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, we want to share this particular screen here. Uh, there we go. Uh, do you see it? Do you see the screen? No, oh, Rabbi. No, okay, no. I'm gonna share it. Let me share it. Let me share the screen. Um, I have to share the screen. I'm, I'm having a little technical difficulty. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, here it is. Yeah, okay. Now it's okay. Yeah. Now it's okay. Now, now it's good. Okay. Uh, we said that if somebody is going alone at night, and he turns his heart to Batola. So, so what happens when a person turns his heart to Batola? 
it's as if you're you're going you're going to be killing yourself because when you turn when you turn your mind to batola you're in big trouble listen let's say you're around people all right if you're around good people good people are going to be talking good topics and your mind is going to be removed from thoughts of doing something that's not so nice you're going to be at least in a good group even if you're not in a a, a group of learners of rabbis even if you're not you're just with a group of friends just by being with a group of friends there's a good chance you're going to talk about important things whatever it is that all the friends consider important if it's a bunch of young kids they'll be talking about school if you're a little older you may be talking about marriage if you're a little older you may be talking about children if you're a little older you may finally get into politics or speaking about the local uh, news in the area but if you're among people and the jewish people as we said in the aggregate are very good so your mind is not going to be set on doing things that are filled with bitter things that are filled with foolishness with emptiness with nullification you're not going to be bothering with that but Rabbi Hanani ben Khachinoi is saying Rabbi Hanani ben Khachinoi is saying if you go alone at night upana libo libatola and you put your mind to nothing it's going to end up that kilu mishaya benasha you're going to get yourself killed you're going to kill yourself basically is what he's saying there is a very interesting passage that we have right here on the board in front of us and i'm going to highlight hi- highlight it right here by putting the hand it's in uh, uh it's in the uh, gracious peric lamed zion and it's talking about the brothers and yosef comes to them and they they're under the impression i'm not going to get through i don't have time to go through the whole situation just suffice it to say that the brothers who were the most righteous people on earth and were a bezdin agadol they were a righteous bezdin the greatest sadikim on earth they judged him that he was trying to usurp the throne because of the dreams that he had and they knew that the throne belonged to yehuda and he was going to make himself that they're going to bow down to him taking the throne from yehuda is more red bemalchus it's a rebellion against the king the rebellion against the king is chayav misa they judged him he's chayav misa he's chayav misa yosef okay they made a mistake they were wrong even the greatest people can be wrong but they judged him that he's chayav misa so the pasuk says that eventually ruven comes along and he says you know i don't think we should kill him by our own hands let's leave it up to god let's throw him in the pit We'll throw him in the pit and we'll see what happens when we throw him in the pit if god wants him to live he'll live he doesn't want to live he won't live ruven has in mind that he's going to come back and take him out in the meantime they throw him in the pit the pastor says by ikahu they took yosef by yashlihu oso habora and they threw him into the pit the pastor says the habor rake and the pit was empty ain bo moyen there was no water in it that was say i ask you if the pit is empty and it has no water in it why do you have to say the pit is empty it has no water say the pit is empty if you say the pit is empty we know it has no water why are you eating that it has no water the famous famous rashi rashi is right here now on the board Take a look at Rashi. Rashi writes, "A bore came up." I mean, he's quoting the Medrash, and the Medrash says, "Me mash mash shenem ar vahabo reik," from the fact that we know that the pit is empty. Ani yodeish ain bo mayim. Don't we know that there is no water in it? Rashi's kasha is this: Why did the pasuk have to say the pit is empty? There's no water. If it's empty it means there's no water. Why are you eating there's no water? So Rashi explains because in order to tell you ma talmud loma ein bo mayim what does it come to teach you when it says there was no water? I have something special to teach you. Mayim 
ain bow. There was no water in it. But there were snakes and scorpions in it. There's a direct quote from the Gemara and Shabbos and the Medrash Rabbah. So it's unbelievable that what do we see? We see that when they threw Yosef in the pit, there was no water. But the Torah is testifying that there were snakes and scorpions because when there's no water, you don't have to say the pit is empty. There was no water. Just say the pit is empty. It's trying to emphasize it was empty of water. But the Choshen Vakrab in Yeshva. I want to tell you something. The Vilna Gon and others took a look at this particular Rashi and they extrapolated a drush, a homiletical interpretation based on these words. The pit is empty. There is no water in it. Why do you have to say there's no water in it? If it's empty, of course there's no water. No, I want to tell you something. If the pit is empty, of course there's no water. But I wanted to tell you something. The pit is not going to stay empty. It's going to fill up. It's going to fill up with snakes and scorpions. Says the Vilna Gong, if a person doesn't put Mayim in the pit, if you don't put Mayim in your head, in the pit of your brain, in the pit of your neshama, if you don't put Mayim, Mayim Chayim Shel Torah, like the Navi says, Hoi Kol Tzamei L'chul Mayim. Oh, all you thirsty ones, go to water. As the Pichas Mordechai Taitz Zechel used to say, nothing quenches thirst like water. You can drink all the soda you want in the world. It won't quench your thirst. The only thing that really quenches it is the pure water of the Torah, the Mayim Chaim Shel Torah, says the Vilna Gaon. If you don't fill your head with Mayim, if you don't have water in the pit, you should know Nechoshim V'akrab and Yeshbo. You're going to have snakes and scorpions in the pit, says Rebbe Nina Ben Chachinoi. He says, Mefano Libo Lavatola, if you turn your heart to nothing, your mind is not going to be empty. The mind is a miraculous piece of machinery. Because Baruch Hu made the human mind in an awesome fashion. No other being has such a complex system of thought and memory, memory. And we are our memory. We are what we know, what we remember. And long after we're gone from the physical world, the memory lives on. You know, if I took this computer and I smashed it to smithereens, the memory is there. It's there. It's in the cloud. It's somewhere in there. I turn the thing off. I pull out the plug. You imagine that? I pull the plug out of the computer so that a person tries to start the computer and he doesn't know the plug is out. And he calls up the tech department. He says, help, my computer's dead. Of course your computer's dead. You have to plug out. Plug it in. That's the first thing they ask. Is it plugged in? We're plugged in when we're alive. But when the plug is pulled, the memory is still there. Just like the computer memory is still there. And we are our memory. If our pit of memory is empty of anything good, then our Kodesh Baruch is going to go and take the hard drive, and it's going to look through the memory. Let's see here. What do we got here? Do we got someone who's Pona Libo Levatala? Is he turning to nothingness? Because if he turns to nothingness, don't think there won't be nothing there. 
There'll be plenty there, but it won't be Torah there. It'll be Nechashim Akrabim Yeshbo. There will be snakes and scorpions there. And that's what our mission is talking about. Rabbi Chanina ben Chachinoi Omer, Aneir Balayla, if you stay in the middle of the night, you go on your own path. And you turn your heart to nothing. Don't think there's nothing there. But you're going to cause your own downfall because your mind is going to be filled with bad things. It has to be bad things. Because if there's no Torah, it's going to be replaced by something because the mind is not a pit that stays empty. It's always seeking. It always is looking for more, for something else. And consequently, if you don't fill it with Torah wisdom, you're going to fill it with other foolishness. And that's why, and that's why Rabbi Hanina says, don't fill it with nothing because it's not going to remain in Balmayim there's going to be other things in its place. We are now going to take a look at another Pasuk, but here we're going to take a look at a Pasuk in Tehillim. One second, we're going to get to it in a moment. Okay, let's see. Here it is. First we go now to Tehillim. Here we go. Okay. Famous Tehillim, Perikotes, Perikotes. Okay. So, what does Rabbi Hanin ben Chachinoi say? First he says, he starts out by saying, Haneir Balayla. If someone stays up at night. Second thing, he says, is Amahalech Baderechichidi. He goes on the path in his own singular fashion. And the third thing, And he turns his heart to emptiness. Says, says our Mishnah that there are three qualities here. And these three qualities are things we have to be very careful about. We have to be careful about them because, as is pointed out by the Kehilas Yitzchak, the, the, the Kehilas Yitzchak, the Rabbi Yitzchak Yanava, one of the, one of the great, great Rabbanim of the last 200 years, he wrote a beautiful sefer called the Kehilas Yitzchak. The Kehilas Yitzchak is a compendium of divrei Torah from the great minds of the last 100 years. And he speaks on this particular Pesach and Tehillim in a very interesting way. But first, let's see how it relates to our Mishnah. Our Mishnah starts out by saying the first thing. The first thing is Hanayar Balayla. You're awake at night. What are you doing awake at night? Why are you staying up at night? Well, you're staying up at night because your machshava is troubled. The mind is troubled. Something's bothering you. Something's bothering you. You have you have questions. You have difficulties. So you're near the Lila. The Lila, the Lila is dark. And darkness is symptomatic and symbolic always of lack of clarity. We say about a person who doesn't understand something, we say, oh, he's in the dark about that. That's how we use the terminology. They're in the dark. He's like, walking through the night. So he's up at night because he has some questions, some dilemmas. And if he wanted to, he could find answers. There are answers. One answer is you have emuna and betochen. You have faith in Hashem. You look at the Torah and you start learning. And as soon as you start learning, you realize this is awesome stuff. This is powerful. Every letter, every word is precious. We just saw a Pasuk, it looks so innocuous, but it's got such depth of teaching. And once you begin to learn Torah, you see the absolute godliness that inhabits each and every word, letter, sentence. It's awesome. So it's possible 
that if you are up at night and you're concerned about truth, you have problems, you can think and figure out by the study of Torah. Study Torah and you'll see, it'll, it'll become clear. The Torah is a blueprint of clarity and it will be clear. But sometimes, sometimes with the best of thought processes, one is not always capable of reaching those right proper conclusions. People are confused to such a degree that when it comes to the Emunah Peshutah, the simple faith of the Torah being given on Har Sinai, they, they go into all kinds of twisted machinations and they make all kinds of uh, mental gymnastics and they play all these games and they can't figure it out and so on. Okay, you can't figure it out. You can't do it. You're right. You're near Balayla. You have a problem, you can't figure it out, but I have a solution for you. I have a solution for you. Don't go down the path alone. You don't have to go alone. Ask your father. He will tell you. Ask your elders. They will tell you. A Jew just has to go and ask. How do you know that the Torah is authentic? Oh, that's simple. My father told me. But how did he know that he was right? Well, his father told him. And how did he know he was right? Because his father told him. And this scenario repeats itself over all 13 million Jews who if they would all have the Torah, would be able to say. Because the truth of the matter is, people, and if we're honest, we know it. I understand why is the fifth of the Aserah Adibros. Because if there would never have been one person who disrespected his parents, there would not be one Mechal Shabbos on earth today. There would not be one Jew who is Mechal Shabbos. The only way a Jew could become Mechal Shabbos is if they didn't listen, someone didn't listen to his parents. Someone didn't, because all the way back to Moshe Rabbeinu, all the way back, some 80 generations ago, 84 generations ago, that's all it was, 3,330 something years, 3,332 3, years, short time, 40 years a generation, about 83, 85 people, not a lot of people. And you ask any one of them, the millions of Jews in every generation, how do you know? They'll tell you, my father told me. And we have a written authentic record, starting with Pekayovas, with Moshe Kibel, the Sinai, all the way back. So you're not alone. If you don't know the answer to your dilemmas, ask. Ask your parents. We have an Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, a Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, and Dovin. We have a Rabbi Shavagon, we have a Rambam, we have a Rashi, we have a Marsha, a Rajba. We have a Rav Moshe Feinstein's of Final Rocha. We have all the greats of Aaron Kutler. We have the contemporary brilliant geniuses who are leading our people in the right path. We have organizations of Agudis Israel, of the OU, of the Young Israel. We have people who are sent to Grabonim and care and know and intelligent and study and are learned. They're not making up stories. There are millions of people with background who understand and know, and it's written and passed on from generation to generation, ask your, ask your elders. You should know that the proof of the Torah is dependent upon our Masora. So ask your elders. You can't figure it out because you're near Balayla and you're all in a quandary. So don't go walking on the path alone. The next step is ask your elders. But if you can't figure it out, and you don't turn to your elders, then there's a very good possibility you're going to turn libo levatola because you don't have an anchor. You don't have what's clear to every ben and bas Torah, every member of every yeshiva who learned Aleph Beis knows that it's dependent upon the Misola. And without it, you have nothing. Along comes David HaMelech. 
in Tehillim Chav Tes. And look what he says. And I'm going to show you the Rashi in a minute. It's going to blow our minds. Well, maybe not literally, but we're going to get really excited about this. David Amela says, Mizbele David, a psalm for David. Hovu Hashem b'nei Come together, you sons of the mighty, those who have great strength. Who are the B'nai Elim? Who are the Elim? Who are we, the sons of the mighty? Next. Hovu Hashem kovo v'oz. Come, give to Hashem honor and boldness. Next, Pasuk. Hovu Hashem kovo shemo. Let's give to Hashem the honor of his name. Ishtachavu Hashem. Bahadas Kodesh. Let's bow to Hashem with the, with the beauty of his holiness. And we're going to go to the Rashi. And the Rashi on this particular Pasuk says an unbelievable thing. Take a look at this Rashi. We're learning a Rashi on Tehillim. Look what he says. Havu Hashem. The word Havu means come, let's get together, right? Like, like, hava nagila, you know, come, let's rejoice, right? Havu, Lashem, says Rashi, come together for Hashem, hechinu Lashem, let's prepare to go to Hashem, hechinu lo atem b'nei elei ha'aret, you sons of the mighty ones on earth, mikan, Sha'omrim of us. From this Pasuk, we learn that when we say Shmona Esrei, we say Elokeinu Velokei Avoseinu. Umenachem Chiber Hovu Loshan Nesina Elim Asarim. Menachem in his Machberes, he wrote a beautiful dictionary, and he said that Elim are the Sarim, meaning Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So, first, Rashi says, Hovu Lashem Bnei Elim, from here we say, and so on. Let's come to Hashem and give honor and boldness. From here we see that you say, What does that mean? This refers to Baruch HaTah Hashem or Keel HaKadosh. We've just covered the first three brachas of Shemona Esrei. I want to tell you something. Look what Rashi says next. This is unbelievable. V'yesh b'mizmar zeh Shemona Esrei azkaros. Go through that paper. When you get a chance, open it up. Count how many times it says Hashem's name in Mizmar Ledovit. Ukenegdan tiknu yudches brachas. That's where Shemona Esrei comes from. Because there are 18 times Hashem's name is mentioned in this passage. Now, this passage is talking about Rabbi Chad. Because Rabbi Hanina ben Chachinoi said, number one, Hanei or Balayla, you have a problem that you're up at night? I have an answer for you. Hovul Hashem, B'nei Elam, you children of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, have the Ovos, go to your ancestors, ask them for the answer. They have the answer. If you don't want to go to them, you want to figure it out on your own, great. Go to the Torah. Learn the Gevura of Hashem. Gevura Skeshaman says the first daf in Tainus, may Amos Saimaz Kirin Gevura Skeshaman. From when do we begin to mention the power of rain? Go there. Because Hashem is okay, Allah Kodosh. And that's what Rabbi Hananya is saying. Hanin is saying. Number one, if you go at Nehra Balayla, you're up at night, you can't figure out the answer, I have a solution. Go to your parents, ask them. They'll help you reach the conclusion. You can't figure it out on your own. Hovel Hashem b'nei Elim. Hovel Hashem kovod v'oz. Hovel Hashem kovod shemo. David. If you don't do those things, you're going to be mefana libo levatola. Your heart's going to go to emptiness and foolishness and you're not going to be able to achieve what you're aiming for. Wow. Unbelievable. All this encapsulated in the few words that Rabbi Hanina ben Chachinoi says. 
And there's more. Yitz Hashem will continue on, on Wednesday night with the Pirkei Ovos class. Right now, we're going to go to our we're going to go to our uh, I'm turning off the uh, Did I, did I turn it off? Did I turn off the, uh, the, the... I think I did. No. No, it's not off. It's not off. Okay, I'll turn it off now. Okay, here we go.